Hey, what is up, guys? Nice Gaming here. E3 is finally finished. Yes, all the truths about the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 have came to light, and now we know about some future games that are going to be the, either be coming near the end of this year or going into next year. So, you know, I hope you guys and sort of enjoyed this E3. I so, somewhat enjoyed it. I didn't really feel like E3 to me so much uh, this year, not more than it did last year. But um, for these next couple of days, for three days. Uh, I'm going to be hey, just pretty so much clear, just I'm talking about this. how I felt just about some things that I thought were interesting at E3 that they talked about either in their conferences for consoles or for dealing such as game-wise with trailers or uh, in-game content that they're planning on releasing. So to start, you know, the first day off with this video, I am going to be talking about the Xbox One. Yes, the Xbox One. Now everybody has finally seen that. Microsoft has indeed became like EA. They have became the devil. And now they do not give a fuck about us gamers anymore. And they just solely just trying to focus on people that want an entertainment system. And they're trying to really aim that towards that. They're saying fuck the regular gamers. We want people that just want to watch TV and sports and sports and sports. And like to use Twitter and Facebook and more sports and sports and sports. Ain't it grand? I know it's not grand. It's a fucking shitstorm. So okay, what's what's what to start with first from Microsoft? Oh, little little riddle deep. Um, excuse me, guys. What do you do this? So, uh, if you guys do not know, Microsoft, the executive um, director of Microsoft, came and told an interviewer. I think it was either for GameSpot or IGN. It's one of the two. And the interviewer asked him, "What about people that doesn't have good?" internet <clears throat> that doesn't have um, excuse me guys that doesn't have um, good internet connection he so much told the interview is we have something for those people that <laughs> don't have good internet connection or just don't have good internet at all it's called the Xbox 360 and I'm like when he said that that was just a giant middle finger to everybody Ready out to there that said we do not have no good internet connection. How are we supposed to play our single player games that's coming out on this system in the future? He basically said, you guys can go fuck yourselves, buy this new Xbox 360 that came out, or keep the one that you currently have. We're not going to bend to none of y'all needs, so, you know what, you guys go have fun with that. So, I'm like, basically, he just said, screw you guys. We, not, we don't care about you guys. We just only care about the people that can't afford, you know, internet connection every month and have good high-speed internet. Those are the people we're going to cater to. We're not going to cater to you people that can't afford to get a good quality internet service or don't have an internet service at all. You guys don't matter. If you guys want to still play games, you need to still play in your Xbox 360. And I'm like this. When I saw, you know, the trailer for Halo 5, and then at the end it said, the new adventures coming to Xbox One, I'm like, that was just another stab in the back Microsoft just did to everybody that has, that only, that doesn't have, like, good internet connection, or none at period. That was just pretty much saying, yeah, we're not going to give you Halo 5. Halo 5 is only going to be reserved for people that can actually afford internet or can afford a good internet connection. We're not going to give it to you people that want to, you know, play on this old console that's so outdated and stuff. We're only going to give it to the people that are going to support this system only. And it's like everything, whether it's been a rumor or not, still everything that they, that's they that been said about this x one has been pretty much true. Been true. Yeah, you don't have to pay a fee for when you get used games. But if you trade or get or give a game to somebody else, so they have to be friends for you for 30 days in your actual Xbox Live friends list. And when you let them see that game, they cannot give it back to you. It's automatically stuck to them. So it's like pretty much when they install it on their system, it's forever stalled on their system and can't come back home to you. So that pretty much nips out loaning games, trading games right out of the bud. They, you know, because when that, you know, when it got out that people got upset about us paying money to actually, um, play you games on a, a whole bunch of people up in the uproar was like well, well I'm not about to pay Microsoft no fee just to play a used game well now is that if you get a trade game or you let somebody see your game is either stuck with them for life or when you get one when you buy a used game it's automatically stuck with you 
you can take it back to GameStop and trade it back in because it has no value because it's only going to be forever registered to your system and can't be registered to no one else's system. So, you know, that sucks. And then on top of that, it's mostly focused on this console itself. It's mostly focused on multimedia purposes such as Twitter and Facebook and, you know, watching, you know, app television shows like for ESPN or... You know, any other, I don't know, probably any other type of sports channel they try to add on. And then they're trying to make, like, their own TV series on Xbox. They're trying to put that all on it. And when they first announced it, a lot of people on YouTube um, said that we do not want a cable box. Because that's what basically Sorry, this thing is. No it's just a giant cable box. We do not want this. We just want a gaming console that can just play nothing but our games for us. And then right off the bat, they're going to charge you. That's a lucky number. Five, no, it, it wasn't, I think, it, yeah, it was, they're going to charge you, I think, about $500 for the Xbox One. And I'm like, yeah, okay, $500, but it ain't worth $500. It ain't worth, it's not worth five, let me, okay, let me rechange that. It's not worth $500, $500 to no gamer, because I can guarantee you, no gamer is not going to be using all those features, all those multimedia um, <coughs> features. On their Xbox One, they're not gonna use them. They're just gonna be just sitting there to catch dust. And then, the what makes the matters even worse, the Connect. We did not even use the Connect even when they first announced it to the 360, and they saw that it didn't make a killing. It was just a fling. People didn't really need the thing just to sit up and do motion to switch your hand across the screen. Now they're trying to emphasize on that game and basically say that you must have the Kinect always, you know, plugged into it 24-7 or else your console will not operate. I'm like, they're trying to force a product that didn't sell well in the years before and they're trying to force it on people so they can order it for it to work. And then the funny thing is, they say the Kinect won't always be on, won't, it's not always on. But when you turn your console off, it is on technically because it has voice recognition. So when you pretty much wake up or do whatever, all you gotta do is tell it, tell the Kinect to turn the Xbox on. How is that not the Kinect not always on? It sounds on to me. And now this gives the government a good, you know, legitimate reason to listen in on people's conversations to see if they can check the terrorists and all these other good things to see, you know, probably a video game actually cause violence in the world today which is pretty much a cover-up for them you know for something else a lot bigger but that's not the point of in case of why i'm talking about it's a bunch of bs and then another thing is for those of you guys that don't know the system is legion region locked and for and what region lock means is so if you have somebody that stayed in like great britain and you're here in america you would not be able to play with that friend from great britain because your system is only locked to the United States of America. You can only play with people that lives here in the United States of America. And he can only play with people that lived in Great Britain. So if you wanted to play with your friend or your cousin that's from Great Britain, you're going to have to move to Great Britain so you can be within his region to play with him. It's no more uh, worldwide playing with people from uh, Africa, Japan, or Great Britain. Or I don't know about South America. All I I don't know about I South America, Comstock. but the thing is, region lot is just pretty much they're trying to box us in, and they're really syrups, syrups, so much our control of who we play with and what we can play on this thing. And then what makes matters worse, they make like titles like Halo Five or anything else, like only exclusive titles. They made it for. <clears throat> They made it just only exclusively for the one because they know, they already know, Microsoft so knows that this thing is not going to sell when it come times around the holiday season, this thing is not going to sell. All their profits, I can tell you right now, and for those that have been watching E3, all their profits, it's going to go to Sony because they done fucked up with the whole console design and they're so high and mighty proud sitting up saying, well, we don't feel like we did nothing wrong, we feel like we're doing everything right. You're not doing nothing right, you're making stuff worse and you're in denial, but the only way to, for you to try to salt the wound is and try to get people to buy it is you make all these famous games like Halo, um, I, I can't really name any other exclusive that um is coming out for it oh and little quick that for those kingdom of heart fans which i'm going to be talking about in another uh video but i'm just going to just say it right here right now just for them because this is how desperate microsoft is to get people to play this one is 
Kingdom Hearts 3, for those that, you know, that seen the E3 trailer, you know, like the sort of in-game beta test development trailer, they have now announced that Square Enix has signed like a partnership so that when Kingdom Hearts 3 does come out, it will be coming out on the PlayStation 4, but it will also be coming out on the Xbox One. Now, does it sound that sound very desperate because they know this? They know this console ain't gonna sell, so they're trying to basically trying to grab as many games as possible and try to put it on this one console because they know this console is not gonna sell great by it itself. It's too many stupid features. It's too, way too many ex restrictions, and it's way too many unnecessary crap that's on it. That's not gonna help no gamer really go past their gaming potential. And that's what's gonna make them go all go flock to Sony, cause as you guys can probably see from people that made videos about the Xbox One so far, and also talking about um, how you know Sony they may be well Sony, you know Sony, yeah they they got a couple of you know hiccups with the PlayStation 4, but they still at least gave people their freedom back. They're not doing the same mistake that Microsoft is trying to do. They're not trying to box everybody in the one corner and tell us what we're going to play and how we're going to play it. No, they're pretty much just sitting up saying you guys can do what you want. You can trade your games with each other because the, those games you paid your $63 for them. You can do whatever you want with them because they are your games and you guys have free reign and stuff. But, you know, I'm, I'm going to talk about you know, the PlayStation 4 and this hiccups on another video in these next two, uh, couple of days, but right now we're focused on the Xbox One, the shitty one. The original Xbox One is the very first Xbox that came out. This is, I don't know why they named it in this. So, Infinity sounded a lot better than the Xbox One. It, it, it's just, it did, and I'm, I'm like, why you name it the one? It's not the first one that ever came out. You guys are just, it's just shooting yourselves in the foot. You lost a bunch of fans that been with you since day one and stuck with you through it all. Despite some of the problems that the 360 had when it first came out and going onward, they have stuck with you. I have stuck with you through thick and thin, despite all the flack that's been happening. We have been with you. We've been playing our money countless, countlessly to you in the marketplace and buying your games. And then you basically sit up and tell us, you can go for yourself. And if you don't have internet connection, then continue to play your 360. But we already know within a couple years down the line, they're going to close down the the servers for Xbox 360. They're going to close down the Microsoft, um, the, um, the marketplace and everything else. And they're going to suspect you to go out and buy a one. They're just pretty much trying to whittle us down to the point where we have to go buy a one in order to play the games that we love. I don't really think that so much going to work. I know these fanboys out here are sitting. They don't even know nothing what's going on because it's a new Xbox and it has next gen next to it. They got to think they're going to go and get it. But I'm telling you, these fanboys are going to be so butthurt when they play it and they see how many restrictions they got on whatever games they want to play. Now, guarantee you, when it comes like halfway through 2014 going into the um half more well, yeah just halfway through in 2014 i bet you'll be a damn sale on that xbox one i bet you'll be like a three to two hundred dollars selling because it's not going to make all that do good and sell despite what game is going to release on it because we have no freedom you can't do anything with it it's pretty much they tell you what to do and how you should do it and if you don't like it then you can go back to the 360 but don't be over there on the 360 too long because the 360 it's it's lights going to burn out real quickly so you know you better enjoy it while you last if you're not playing if you be able to play games offline without us watching you 24 to 7 because as soon as when that 360 runs out then you're gonna have to come over to this side and play the one but it's like what's the point i built up this enormous game library on my 360 i should be able to play it on my one i should be able to loan my games to anybody or trade them in because they're my games i spent my hard on cash on it and you guys should enjoy it and accept it whatever so it does me so as for me i will not be getting the xbox one I have officially declared that game, that not that game, that console is a piece of shit. Microsoft can go fuck themselves and any other 
developers that sit up and making just games for this one. You guys need to go fuck yourselves in the ass because you guys are not real developers. You don't really give a damn about us because if you did, you'll keep making games for the 360 to put Microsoft in their place and sit up and saying, no, we won't let you do this to our loyal fans and cheat them out of a good gaming experience. So tell me guys what you think of the Xbox One. Shit or good? Well, I know most of y'all going to say shit, but then them fanboys going to be saying it's good. Let me know in the comments below. Peace. Why are you following me? Why are you following us? Aperitif. You'll find that happy in a pinch. The difference between life and death. What was that? Surprising. Surprising that it worked? Surprising that it didn't kill him. The field around one's body can come in handy. If it doesn't kill you. Okay.